people welcome to another installation of our chair interval training brought to you by community access yellow springs and the yellow springs senior center two fine institutions we have here in yellow springs and another fine institution that i'm sporting a shirt to um, give a shout out to is our Recreational Soccer League, which has been in effect for well over 50 years now. It was started by a African-American citizen here, Joe Robinson. You can read all about it on our website. I'm going to remove my mask since I'm here in my little studio um, to be with you. Anyway, more on this, YSSI is our newly named but very old and wonderful youth soccer program. So um, let's get started, but before we do, remember, always consult a physician before you begin this or any new exercise program. And if you feel dizzy or unbalanced at any time, you can remain or return to your sturdy chair. And that's what we're gonna be using today as we exercise to some music. You'll need a ball if you have one, or any thick, sturdy um, kind of foam pillow, and maybe a rubber band, and oh yeah, and this whole month, and this is our last week of July, we've been using some hand weights or a jug filled with water. So we're going to start out, or I'm going to start out standing, but you are welcome to remain in your chair and exercise there. I have to make a little adjustment here. There. <laughs> Sorry! <laughs> Hopefully you kept moving, whether you're in your chair or in the air. And this is a great time to do. safety first. Check your area around your chair and in your exercise space. Make sure nothing that will cause you to slip, trip, or fall is under your feet. And use your best posture because it makes our movements easier. We don't want to make it harder. All right, it also makes it easier to breathe when we sit or stand tall with the ears over the shoulders over the hips. We're going to warm up, and as usual, I will preview a couple of patterns that we'll use today. But first, I'm going to invite you to the back of your chair or right square in the seat. Wide out your feet and just sort of rock your, your body side to side. Lifting your shoulder one at a time. Maybe rolling it back. Or as I like to say, exploring your safe, comfortable range of motion today. Every day is different. So please, if anything hurts, just reduce the range of motion. Or substitute something that you did before that felt good to you, like marching. All right, let's preview a couple of these patterns. I'm gonna move in front of the chair so you can see what my feet are doing, but I want you to stay always within a finger's reach of your chair, so no more than an arm length away. Um, we're gonna do a cha-cha to our Latin-inspired music. We've done it before, but stay where you are so you can touch your chair behind it. I'm going to come in front so you can see my feet. We're going to start out slow with a step to the side and one, two, three. Slow to the right or the other right. Oh boy. Left and march two, three, right. And if it feels good, you can just do a little mini squat there. And one, two, three. Weight equal in both feet. We're really stepping, we're not tapping. We could do one more slow, and then we could do it a little faster. Left, one, two, three, right. Cha, cha, cha. Easy. And easy does it because we're just warming up. So, how about one more each side? And I'm going to return to my chair and show you another pattern that's similar to one we've done before, but with a little twist. 
we're going to use a pattern that sounds like this. Lift, lift, freeze. So we can lift, lift, freeze. Lift, lift, freeze. Got our chair. Lift, lift, pull the navel in. It helps your balance. Lift, lift, freeze. Lift, lift, freeze. We can do this slow. One more time. Lift, lift, freeze. We can do it faster. Lift, lift, freeze. Lift, lift, freeze. Lift, lift, freeze. You get the picture? Good. Just march it out. All right. We're going to, uh, while we're standing, if we are standing, Walk one leg back, get a gentle calf stretch before we return to our chair for some dynamic seated warm up. So our heel is pasted to the ground as we gently lean forward. Maybe making a strong long diagonal from the heel through the hip to the fingertips, up, up, on the toes. And then, pasting the heel again. Pull up to the ball of your foot. Shoulders right over your hips. Try a little mini lunge. Got your chair if you need it. This is strength and balance and warming up those thighs. Now, hold your body steady, but tuck your tailbone under. Open your chest. Close. If your balance is super steady, go ahead and take it to both arms. Knowing you've got your chair there and knowing you can step out. Those are always good balance strategies. Walk your other foot back, little by little. Face the heel on the ground. These stretches, you know, that we do in this warm up is exactly what our youth soccer players could do before they begin to play. Long, strong diagonal. Up on the ball of the foot. And relax, paste that heel on the ground again and lean into it gently. Okay, on the ball of that rear foot, little mini lunge. Good. If you like and your balance is steady, you can do both arms. And then gently tuck the tailbone under, feeling a stretch on the hip flexor and the quadriceps. And then open. Good breathing technique. Inhale as we open our chest and spine. Exhale as we close. And that comes into play when we're exercising more vigorously, especially when we do the strength work. Speaking of strength work, you know what our best body weight strength exercise is? You guessed it. It's a squat. Before you squat, take your time and get to the front of your chair so your legs are lined up. Heels touching and try your best slow sit down, keeping your chin up, hinging your hips back. If you like, you can freeze. Or come up and do it again. If you like, you can just sit down. Or you can do it again. And I'll join you in the chair. This is a good time to get a sip of water. Oh, it's been hot, has it not? When we're getting things down low, like our water or our weights or just everyday stuff, stepping to the side, leaning to the side and supporting with our arm really helps protect the lower back. It also keeps our head above the level of our heart, which is a good practice because if we dip down too fast, too, too low, we get dizzy. All right, we're gonna sit at the edge of our seat. I use this rubber band. We're not gonna use it today for um, our strength work. I'm just using it so I don't slip. Hi, how are you today? I didn't say a proper hello. Well, it's good to be here. I've said that before, but it truly is. All right, sitting tall, pull your navel in, buckle up your safety belt. And let's go for a ride. Push your right foot out. Push your left foot out. If you wanted, you can pretend you're playing soccer. 
and you can kick, point that toe, lock the ankle, opposite arm, we're going slow motion, so if we want, we can articulate with a point, flex, point, point, flex, point, it's really good to get those ankles limbered up, wrists also, Pull that navel in and sit tall. If that hurts anything at all, you can do it on the ground. And let's just stretch a little bit on this right hamstring. Make a nice stable table with your knee over your ankle. Inhale, noticing how it feels. If it hurts your shoulder to extend it, bring it in. But keep your back long and strong and hinge halfway towards your lap. Keep that chin up. Looking forward, reaching the head. Lift your toes up. And then down by pushing on a pedal. Sit tall. Hold the navel in to support the back. And lean back. If this hurts your hip, as you draw circles in the air with your foot, you could always do it on the ground. But up in the air, we're getting our hips stretched a bit too, and our lower back. Let's try that left hamstring stretch, supporting on the right lap. Feels good to move. If it doesn't feel good, remember, you can substitute a different movement, lifting those toes and fingers and lowering sole towards the ground. You know what also works well as we pull our navel in and lean back? You can just skip parts of the exercise program. You don't have to do it all. Just do your best and by all means rest when you need to. For that matter, Maybe this isn't enough for you, so you can supplement this program with other exercise. All right, let's open our chest as we breathe in. And I want to remind you about the proper intensity. It is your responsibility. You are in charge of you because nobody knows how you feel except for you. So I'm going to remind you occasionally, on a scale of 1 being the lowest intensity and 10 being the highest, that we're shooting for a happy medium of 4 to 7, for the most part. And if you can't talk or something hurts, then I would call that a 9 or a 10. An 8 is a kind of like, whoa, we're, we need to sort of tone it down. A 1 or a 2 means, yeah, you can probably work harder but you're still going to get the benefits of moving. So, let's move. We're going to do, well, let's do the cha-cha first. So let me make sure my music is working for me. Oh, it's working for me. We're right on time. All right, you can cha-cha in your chair or you can cha-cha in the air. I'm going to show it one time in the chair, but I would like you, and you, and you, and you, to please, if you know you like to stand, Come and get behind your chair so you can use it and do check for things that might have gotten on your feet. Okay? We're going to start slow with a step out to a mini squat and a one, two, three. And a step out with a mini squat and a one, two, three. When you step out, put your weight equal in your left and right feet. And how low you go with your mini squat is up to you. Off the tempo, I'll find it again. One, two, three. Step out and one, two, three. Now, we've been going slow. Let's do one more slow and then we can try the tempo. Step out, oh, one, two, three. So, this is a, an example of an agility pattern that gets us mildly aerobic, which is good. We can add to our agility some coordination. We can push our arm in the same direction as our leg. We can even look if we feel 
feel well balanced. And that will keep one hand available to touch your chair for that balance check if you need it. Okay, now we've been pushing our arm with our leg. Let's push it opposite of the leg. Oh. Did you get that? Well, we've been doing a cha-cha. If we really want to work on agility, let's drop the arms and keep the feet moving. I'm going to transfer to my standing position, but you keep moving here with your mini squat. Cha, 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 step out. Keep going. I'm watching you. I forgot which side we were on already. No worries. We're going to make it go faster, so bring it to a march. Oh, that was great. All right, how are you feeling on that scale of 1 to 10? Because we're about to ratchet this intensity up a bit. Should you choose? We were going at this tempo. Cha-cha-cha, step. Cha-cha-cha, step. Cha-cha-cha. We're going to go at this tempo. Step, 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 step. Now put your weight into it. And instead of a cha-cha-cha, now we're doing a salsa. Stay the top behind your chair. I'm going to come out so you can see what I'm doing with my feet. Step, step. So your weight goes into your equally into both feet each time. Now we're moving. That's your salsa. But you can make it kind of just a pattern if you don't like the hands. Woo, how are you doing? You need a break? Take a little march. Keep moving, whether in the, in the chair or in the air, or on your feet or in your seat. Can you talk? I hope so. We're going to take our cha-cha slow in a different way. We're going to take our, from the right side of our chair, our right foot will go forward. We're working on coordination now as well. Then we'll do our cha-cha-cha. And we'll take our left foot back. Here's what it looks like. Forward, right, and cha, cha, cha. Back, left. One, two, three. Step on it. Okay, use your chair. Don't make your step so big that you're unbalanced. We'll do one more forward and back slowly. And then if you choose, we'll go to tempo. Last time, slow. Ready? Tempo. Forward, cha cha cha. Back, cha cha cha. Right forward, cha cha cha. Left back. Okay, just like before, we're going to add same side arm. Push back. Right arm forward, right arm back. Or you can just keep that. That's not your right arm, that's your left arm. <laughs> You can just keep your left arm near your chair. <laughs> okay, get ready for a coordination challenge or a switch. We're going to move that arm opposite. So when the right foot for goes forward, the right hand goes back. I hope this is a little bit challenging for you, but not too much. Okay, do we think we can go a little bit faster? Let's just get rid of the arms. That's not a bad idea. Just change one, one thing at a time. We'll do it tempo one more time. Ready? Step, step, forward, back, forward. Lower your body into that little mini lunge that we practice during the warm-up. That's hard. Sort of hard for me. That's like a seven. How are you feeling on our scale of one to ten as you march it out? Can you move a little more? We're shooting for ten minutes of mild aerobic activity. How much you do is up to you. All right, so just so we get an equal left-right opportunity, come on over to the 
left side. We're going to try that front back pattern again. Starting slow, left foot forward, right foot back, best posture. Step on it. One, two, three. Now right foot back. Good. One, two, three. You can go low. One, two, three. Or not. One, two, three. But let's take it up to tempo. Are you ready? Step, step, and one, two, three. Good. Always check every so often for your chair. Make sure you haven't cha cha away. <laughs> Let's do some different arms now. When we step on the left foot, let's point to the left. And when we step on the right, point to the right. Kind of like we did with our initial cha-cha coordination challenge. We'll do one more like that. Forward and back. And then we'll try opposite. So, left foot, right arm, right foot, left arm. In theory, I know what I'm going to do. <laughs> and it's still challenging for me. So I hope you're following along, doing your best. Of course, you know what else works? No arms, or one hand on your chair. Or marching it out or taking a rest, but if you like, we'll do one more little stint at a faster pace, one more forward and back. Are you ready? Salsa, woo! Oh, I realized I forgot to do that on the other side. Now, whether or not you like to dance, it's just an agility drill. So step on it. Four, three, two, one. Good, march it out. How are you feeling? Magnifico, magnifico. I hope so. All right. Um, good news. We are going to transition from our slightly aerobic pattern to one of strength. And yes, you guessed it, we get to do some squats. If you use your chair and you keep your head up, you can lunge down and get your weight. If you don't want to do squats with extra weight, you don't have to. But next week we won't be using our hand weights. We'll use our ball and our rubber tubing. So let's make the most of it while we've got it, shall we? If you can hold your weight, one hand underneath, one hand on top, or both hands on the handle, Keep it down low, keep your head up high, hand your hips back. I forgot to remind you, make sure your feet are close to the chair legs. Touching is ideal. And if you like, when you sit down, you can lift that jog out in front, using your shoulders as well. So our bottom is going down and the jug is going up. Later on, we'll do the reverse. And I'm not feeling like doing too many more of those. If your shoulders ache when you do this, another way you can do it is hold it close to your body. And it just adds weight to your body weight squat. And when we do that, it makes us stronger. So the, the goal is to work smarter and harder without pain. I'm ready for some water. How about you guys? Here's to your health. All right, we are going to use our ball first. We're going to do a couple familiar exercises, but they're good ones. I'm trying to mix it up if you haven't noticed. So once you got your ball and you're all set, Come to the edge of your chair, please. Tuck the ball between your legs above the knees. Sit tall. We're going to build a progression, and it's your responsibility to figure out 
where is the best place for you to be aptly challenged, okay? So, sitting at the edge of your chair, feet a little closer to the knees, squeeze that ball. Very important to exhale. As if you're blowing out a candle, each time you give that ball a big hard squeeze. Don't want to hold your breath. You can feel your inner thighs strengthening. Good. We're going to add on or do another rung of the progression by pushing the heels into the ground. Now you can feel your hamstrings, I hope. Breathing. Pushing your heels into the ground. Peel your toes up. And now you can feel your shins strengthening. Go at your own pace. Breathe at your own rhythm. Adding on to that, squeeze your gluteal muscles. As if you're trying to pick a dime up off of the chair. Okay, adding on. We're going up the ladder. You decide how far you want to go. If it hurts, don't do it. But we're going to do some little chair dips. Very little. By pushing into the chair. Try not to let the shoulders hunch. Actually pushing them down. Straightening the elbows as you squeeze the ball. Dig your heels in. Lift your toes. Squeeze your glutes. Last rung on the ladder is a glute bridge. If you like. If nothing hurts. This is a whole body exercise. So just do your best. And then please rest. I'm going to try two more. Woo. Getting hot in here. Wow. The ball even got hot from all that compressed air. <laughs> all right, we're going to do some exercise for the lateral stabilizers, the obliques, and then these long muscles along your spine called quadratus laborum. So, what we are also going to have a choice to do is a shoulder stabilizer squeeze. So, tuck that ball under, drop your shoulder down. Give it a squeeze, make sure it doesn't shoot out. Breathe. Each time you squeeze that air out of the ball. So we're strengthening these muscles that support the stability of your shoulder. Now, to add our obliques, we're going to tilt to the side. Each time you do that, pull the navel in, breathe out. Don't run into that imaginary curtain in front of you. If you wanted to progress this one, you could lift your arm a bit. Do your best. Really squeeze everything you put into it. It's what you get out of it. If you wanted, you could even make that bigger. I kind of like it here, though. We could try a different tempo or a different speed. But with a little pulse, inhale at your own pace. Exhale at your own natural rhythm. Sometimes our real life strength work comes at different paces. And sometimes we're pushing against a force that barely moves until it does. So we like to try some isometric, some slower, and some what faster exercises. But you know you. Let's try that other side. Make sure the shoulder is settled down. As you pull, if anything hurts, change it. You could also try this orientation with the palms facing in. For some people, that might actually be easier. I like it with the palm up. Now, we're going to add that right oblique lateral flex. And it works much more than just the obliques. There are those long stabilizer muscles along the spine that we're strengthening here. The quadratus lumborum. And those are really important for helping us stand tall and balance while we move. If you wanted to progress this exercise, you could lift that elbow. But keep breathing. Excellent. And if you like, we could end with a pulse. 
Breathe at your normal pace. Woo. Awesome. All right. So, we are going to tuck this ball away and get another sip of water. All right, as we transition to our next pattern, we're going to work on, as we usually do, the ABCs, agility, balance, and coordination. There's a little bit of each of those in this, in this next pattern, so just a reminder to go at a pace and a speed that suits you best. And then you can always come or start in your chair. You come back to it, you can stay here. I want to show you, those of you who know you want to be standing for this next pattern, take your time, get on up, maybe come over here to the left side of your chair. Por favor. And um, if you're seated or standing, make sure nothing's under your feet and best posture. It sounds like lift, two, three, freeze, and this is what it looks like. We could do it with little knee lifts. Lift, two, three, freeze. Lift, two, three, really freeze. Keep that good pace rhythm of your breathing. Lift, two, three, freeze. Lift, two, three, freeze. Lift, two, three. It actually sounds like lift. Two, freeze. That's better. Lift, two, freeze. That sounds better. Lift, two, freeze. Now I notice when I'm in the chair, the tops of my thighs and sometimes in the air start to get tired. So you can always change it up by pulling your heels back and freezing or kicking your feet out and freezing. But keep moving at your own pace. I'm going to transition to my feet. You can stay in your seat or come back to it. Okay. Those of you who have been over here on the left, I'm going to join you. So, let's play around with the speed of this pattern. Let's try doing it a little bit faster with those knees. Lift, two, three, freeze. So lift, two, three, freeze. I didn't give you much warning there. You can pump your arms. You've got your chair. You can also put your foot down whenever you need. One, two, three, freeze. Good. Do you think you could do this a little faster? Let's think about that. Lift, two, three, freeze. Lift, two, three, freeze. Hold. One, two, three, hold. Oh. oh, that'll be a good one for our soccer kiddos, but that was kind of fast for me. How is it for you? One being, I can do it all day, and ten being like, oh no, more, please. <laughs> Hopefully you're in that four to seven happy zone. Let's switch it up a little, bring it behind our chair with a hip width stance. Stay behind your chair. I want to show you what I'm doing. Stay behind your chair. So you got your chair right there. I don't want to kick the chair. We're going to use our hamstring lift to freeze. Lift to freeze. Lift to freeze. Got it? Lift to freeze. Good. Lift to freeze. Lift two, freeze, lift, two, freeze, I'm getting tired of this tempo, how about you, one more at this tempo, lift, two, freeze, look faster, lift, two, three, freeze, lift, two, freeze, that's it, you got your chair, lift, two, freeze, lift, two, freeze, lift, Two, freeze. This is tricky. I'm not going to make this one go faster. How are you doing? 
I wish I could see you. One more time. Let's march it out. Woo! I'm going to come behind my, or back to my chair. We're going to stay behind our chair. Okay? But we're going to use our hips. So, not a hip width stance. We're going to go slow. What will sound like you lift? Two, freeze. Oh yeah, lift, two, freeze. Stand tall, hold the navel in, freeze. And lift, two, freeze. Working on balance and hip strength. I know you can feel that. Lift, two, freeze. Lift, two, freeze. Oh, lift, Two, I was a little wobbly there. I can use my chair. Lift, two, freeze. How about two more? Lift, two, freeze. Lift, two, freeze. Ooh, I felt that. Ooh, how about you? Do you want to try it again? If you are feeling like a four to a seven with your breathing and your heart rate, but your hips are sore, no worries. We'll focus on a different muscle group. Let's just do some heel digs. So over here on the right side of your chair, we're gonna just stick it out, stick it out, freeze. Tap the ground, tap the ground, tap the ground. We're using a heel dig or a tap. Heel, heel, freeze. Heel, heel. Freeze. You got your chair. Heel. Heel. Freeze. And heel. Heel. Freeze. And heel. Heel. Freeze. Do you think you could put that out in the air? Freeze. Ooh. Heel. Heel. Freeze. Heel. Heel. Keep your body straight and tall. Heel. Heel. Freeze. How are you doing with that? I hope good. Heel, heel, freeze. You got your chair. Heel, heel, freeze in front. Heel, heel, heel. Let's march it out. Well, I think actually we may have used all of the time that we wanted to use there. How did that go so fast? Well, we'll do it one more time. Best posture, make sure you can touch your chair. Don't lean forward with this. Keep it tall and tap your right foot and your left foot. And then freeze. Like we're cross country skiing. Freeze. Right, left, right freeze. Left, right, left freeze. Hard for me to say. So we're just tapping back there, okay? Back, back, freeze. Back, back, freeze. Uh-oh, don't worry. I don't think that's gonna trip you up. Back, back, freeze. Back, back, freeze. Now, this is a big movement when we have our arms moving, so you might wanna bring it in closer. Because if we go faster, that might be hard with those long arms. In fact, let's try no arms. And let's do it slow one last time, each side, and then back, 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 freeze. Ready? Back, 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 freeze, back. Wait, that didn't work at all. You know what? We're done with that pattern. <laughs> I'm going to collect my ball, and I'm going to collect my thoughts, and I'm going to collect my body and get it over here to do some more squats. All right. This time, as we get down to our chair, we can just do our whole body weight without the, the extra hand weights. Get those heels close to the chair, hinge the hips back, keep the head tall. We can add a little tempo here and go down, two, three, up with power. 
down, two, three, up with power, getting the hips way back, squeezing them forward, and when you're ready to sit down, you're right. <laughs> I'm going to go all the way down as slow as I can on this one, maybe hover, and get a sip of water, take your time. As you step to the side, lean into the side. Helps to use your arm to take a load off of your back. All right. That was a new pattern. I did the test it out at home on my favorite test subject, my husband. <laughs> All right, I'm going to show this exercise seated, and then I'm going to show it standing. Um, it's a challenging exercise both ways, but if you know you like to be standing, you can go ahead and situate yourself on the right side of your chair. If you're in your chair, you can kind of situate yourself on the right side of your chair so that you can keep your left foot forward and your right foot back and your left hand on your lap. As you lean forward, reach for the toes, and then row to the shoulder. You can hinge forward at the hip halfway to your lap. Pull your navel in to support your spine. Keep it strong and long. Don't curl your back as you row. This row is strengthening the back of our shoulder, the upper back, and um, the <laughs> biceps, sorry. Good, so that's what it looks like seated. Take a little break. I'm gonna situate myself standing so I can show you another option. Okay, so this is our second set. While we're waiting for that upper back to recover, stand tall, just let that weight hang. And let's strengthen the calves by coming up as high as we can to the tippy toes, and then down, maybe to a mini squat. Up to the tippy toes, good, and then down. Good, one more time, and let's hold it here and try to balance. Good, all right, we got a little break in there. Now, just as we were doing before, instead of in a lunge stance, for those of us who are standing, we're going to do a little kickstand back here with our right foot behind the left. Pull the navel and keep the back long and strong. And hinge halfway, reaching down toward the toes. Keep the back long and strong as you row. We're keeping our weight in our left foot to do this hip hinge. Keeping the belly button pulling in toward the spine to do this one arm row with a hip hinge or a one legged deadlift. Do your best. You'll feel this a lot if you're keeping your back long and strong in the left hamstring back of the hip. I felt that a lot. Shake it out. Okay, so I'm going to show that again once seated and once standing on the left side. But I want to show you, those of you who are going to do it standing, what you'll do there instead. You'll have the right foot forward, left foot back, and you can just do that in a lunge. Okay? So, without the hip hinge, keeping both feet on the ground. Keep going. Those of you in the chair, right foot is straight ahead, left foot's back a bit. Supporting your weight on that right lap. Hinge forward, keep your navel pulling in strong, reach for the toes, row. It's okay to go up and down so long as you don't curl your spine. Keep the spine long and strong, and do your best. Now, if you've been progressing, 
throughout the month of July, maybe your jug has gotten all the way full to the top. And you could do this, and that would be remarkable. Good for you. All right, I'm going to do two more, and then transition to standing. You can stay in your chair. You'll get to do a second set. But in between, those of you who are standing, and you know, if you're seated, you could do toe raises by putting your jug near the end of your knees and do that. So you don't get out of the exercise because you choose to stay in your chair. <laughs> but those of you who are standing, let's just let that weight hang. Take a load off of the shoulders, stand tall. Use your chair if you need it. Come up to your toes. Good, and then down into a narrow mini squat. Up to your toes. We've got our chair, narrow mini squat. Up to your toes. And let's freeze in this toe raise, calf strengthening balance pose. Okay, last standing exercise. Well, we can do one more as well. We're going to put our weight in our right foot. Take our left foot, kickstand behind us. Best long, strong spine. Buckle up that safety belt and hinge forward, reaching down, and then stand tall and row. You can always hold your chair, but we're ideally putting all of our weight in our right foot. You can always touch your left foot down, but trying to keep the back long and strong and trying to keep that right knee straight but not locked. You saw me mess up there a little bit, but nobody's perfect. All right, I'm getting tired of these. This is a good whole body exercise, and it's kind of similar to how you pick things up down low, especially if you had something to support you. Um, one last strength exercise, and this is a whopper. I told you earlier, if you wanted to do this, we're going to do some, um, it's our version of the kettlebell swing, but I want you to do it slow and controlled. And you can hold your jug with both hands on the handle, if that's comfortable. One hand underneath and one hand on top. Shoulders shouldn't shrug. Keep them down. This time when we go down, our jug is going to go down. Keep your head up. And then swing up to about shoulder high. As you drive your hips back, keep your weight in your heels. And as you come up, push your heels into the ground. As you come up, push your knees back toward the chair. As you come up, drive your hips forward. You can go a little faster if you can keep your head up. This is, uh oh, I forgot to put my phone on the airplane mode. I guess it's time to end that exercise. You guys get a sip of water. Life is complicated, isn't it? <laughs> Pardon me. Sorry about that. It was my grandson. He wanted a dinosaur show. This is not the only show I do. I do a nearly daily dinosaur show <laughs> for my grandson in Brooklyn. He's two and a half. He's so cute. I can't wait till it's safe to see him. That's why I'm staying strong. And I hope you are too. All right, I need a sip of water. So. We're going to slow our breathing with purpose, with intention. So just a reminder, as you're seated here, I am going to give you an opportunity to come to your feet one more time if you like, if you feel comfortable and you're not dizzy, just to stretch our calves a bit. It's easier to do that. Um, first, let's breathe in through our nose, if we can, if you're not stopped up. And as you do, think of filling your lungs from the bottom to the top. And as you breathe out through your mouth, effortlessly, think of deflating them effortlessly. 
Rest your hands in your lap and just soften your gaze or close your eyes. And just see if with three or four breaths you can slow your breathing rate a little naturally and slow your heart rate a little. So take your time and inhale when you're ready. Exhale. And just relax and notice. Bringing your attention to your heart and lungs. And with just three or four mindful breaths, we can generally lower our heart rate a little bit. And if we've been exercising super vigorously, we might not want to just sit down in the chair, but as advertised earlier, I want to give you an opportunity to stretch your calves standing because these little powerhouses do so much and they're right there on top of the ankle, which is the most important or one of the most important parts of your body, your feet and your ankles for your balance and your mobility um, to just get around. The longer we can independently walk and squat, research shows, is highly correlated with independent living. So let's stretch these calf muscles, first with a straight leg calf stretch and then with a bent knee, all right? You can use the back of your chair, but I really recommend using a wall so you can kind of easy dig in. I'm going to walk right leg back first, gradually, getting that heel on the ground with the knee straight but not locked, and just lean into it and take a couple deep breaths. This time directing or thinking of directing that energizing oxygen down to your calf muscles and your feet and your ankles. Now if you want, shift your weight to the right hind quarter and let that right knee bend. So you kind of have to sit back into that hip. Really put your weight into that bent knee calf stretch and take a couple breaths. Ease out and we'll do the other leg. So, as you get situated, again, one is the straight knee calf stretch, and the second one is a bent knee. See how I kind of sat back? I'm going back to the wall. Will you join me? And you could also use your chair, but as I said, sometimes the chair scooches. Gradually work that. Heel back until it's on the ground. It should never hurt when you stretch, but you should feel it. At the end, we're really enjoying a better opportunity to increase or maintain flexibility. A couple deep breaths, and then you might have to shorten your stride, but keep your toe pointing straight ahead. Shift your weight into that left hind quarter bending the knee and really push into the heel ah good all right we are definitely going to sit down however we want to and not do a whole bunch more squats so if you need a sip of water please help yourself Sorry about the couple little gaps here in my studio. I just don't know what the, the technical crew is doing. <laughs> it is me, that's all. Okie dokie. Well, I do get a big assist from Sean Devine, station manager at Community Access Yellow Springs. Yeehaw. 
Oh, and just like that, the music slowed down. That's good. Because we're going to slow down a little bit too. Let's get those hamstrings stretched out just as we did in the beginning. Kind of left knee over left ankle, supporting here. A couple deep breaths. Lengthening as we inhale, filling those lungs from the bottom to the top. Exhale as we gradually hinge forward. You might have to negotiate with your chair. You can let that arm drift down and rest wherever it is on your right leg. Knee, shin, ankle, toes. Just enjoy a nice deep breathe in through the nose as if you're smelling the salty air of the ocean. Exhale and relax as you watch the receding wave return to the ocean. If you can dorsiflex your toes closer to your nose, it will help develop this stretch. If you can grab your toes easily, that's a good way to do it too. Or you might want to have like a an old belt or an old tie to lasso your foot to progress this stretch or develop it a little bit more. We're going to stretch that hip with our figure four stretch, keeping that left knee over the left ankle, crossing at the ankle right in front. Let the outside of the knee drift down as you hinge forward. Again, negotiate with your chair as you need but you do need to be a bit at the edge to allow that hip to rotate. If you're more flexible and you can sit with the ankle on top of the thigh easily, then that's perhaps better for you. Do hinge forward at the hip and take a deep inhale. As if you're smelling your favorite aroma. And exhale as if you're blowing out a candle. And ease out of that and roll to the left. Supporting on the right, breathe in. If the shoulder doesn't like to be extended, no worries, just bring it in. Stretch your tailbone back and your nose and the crown of your head forward and let that left arm rest on the leg. Kind of supporting here. And gently dorsiflexing your toes back toward your nose. And or drawing it with your hand or your belt or your tie. Good. The stretches should feel good, but they should feel like they're opening the mobility of your target joints. So if you have stretches that you like to do, by all means do them. But we do try as we cross at the ankles, let the outside of the left knee go down. We do try and get some of the major muscle groups that tend to be tighter. It's a good idea to try to stretch your calf muscles, try to stretch your hamstrings, your quadriceps, which are the fronts of your thighs, hamstrings are the back. And then the outer hip. This is a good one for the outer hip. And the chest and the fronts of the shoulders tend to be pretty tight too. So let's get the fronts of our thighs now. We got the back and the side. And we'll also get these hip flexors. As you turn to the right, your left hip can be just off the chair. And it does help to hinge forward to get that left leg back. Easy does it. Let the left knee drift down. 
to really open the front of the hip and lengthen the front of the thigh as you inhale up. Opening your spine if it pleases you today and exhale towards your chair. And ease out of that. And we'll try the other side. Before we get there though, let's get a chest opener sitting near the edge of your chair. Breathe in, take your time, fill those lungs, and then grasp your chair. And kind of lean forward as you exhale. Keep all four chair legs on the floor. Take a deep breath, lengthen your torso. And then exhale, right ear gently drifting toward the right shoulder. Inhale, sitting tall, lengthening our body with that breath, filling our lungs. Exhale, left ear gently tilting toward the left shoulder. That's a nice stretch for another traditionally or typically tight area of the trapezius. Let's finish off with this stretch. Turning to the left side, hinging forward, taking our time. Let that right knee drift down. Breathe in through your nose like you're smelling your favorite soup and exhale as if you're blowing on the broth as you lean toward your chair and stretch the side of your body ease out of that one and just take a few more minutes to breathe I um, want to thank everybody for joining us as you've been joining it. Um, if, if you borrowed uh, some rubber tubing and a ball from me, I hope you're keeping track of how many workouts you did. Someday we'll be together again. <laughs> and I'll need you to turn in your homework. <laughs> Until then, please keep it safe and simple. And um, that's what we're going to do with our Yellow Springs Soccer Incorporated. Thanks again to Joe Robinson for getting that kicked off uh, in 1964. So gosh, how many? 56 years ago. Wow. <laughs> no, more than that. Yeah, 56 years ago. So anyway, when we restart, um, we're going to make it sure everybody's safe and spread out and the kids won't have to wear their mask. But all of the adults who are not able to socially distance will. And we'll be making other extra special safety arrangements. And as always, you'll have a choice. So keep it safe and simple. Until next time. <laughs>